Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. In the last Fusion 360 tutorial, we learned how to import an aluminum extrusion 3D model to design a frame. After we made the frame, we always needed some mounts to mount different things on the extrusion frame, like sensors, lights, and brackets. In this video, I will show you how to make a mount to slide into the slot of the extrusion and use it to mount anything without using screws or T-nuts to take advantage of the T-slot. I will make a mount for this filament sensor as an example. This mount is going to be really simple. We just need to clone the shape of the T-slot and make a plate on top so it can slide in and fix the sensor. As we need the dimensions of a 2020 extrusion for reference, we need to find the 3D model and import it to Fusion 360. If you want to know exactly how to do that, you can watch my last tutorial, which covers the details of how to find a 3D model online, import it, and use it in Fusion 360. I put the video link under the description. After you've imported the 2020 extrusion model, we can start working in Fusion 360. I will save this new design as 2020 filament mount. Next, simply drag the imported 3D model to the workspace and draw a sketch to project the outline. I will start with creating a new sketch on a plane at the origin. Use the P key to select the project tool, select the surface of the extrusion, and click Finish Sketch. The outline of the extrusion is now projected on this sketch. We can now hide the 3D model and double click on the sketch to work on it. In order to make the mount fit in the T-slot so we're able to slide it in, we need to copy the outline of the extrusion and make a tiny gap between them as clearance. Press the S key to bring up the search menu and search for offset. Select the outline of the extrusion and set the offset to negative 0.2 millimeters. As you can see, we just created the exact same shape but with a 2 millimeter gap between it and the original shape. This is the clearance space that we need to slide the mount inside the slot. Press OK and the red outline will now turn black. In fact, we actually don't need the whole outline of the extrusion to make the mount. Instead of all four sides, we only need one side. In this case, we can hold down the shift key and select the lines we need to form the mount. We can zoom in to make it easier to select. I will select all these lines at the top part of the extrusion. Okay, all the lines we need are selected. Now, use Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste, or Command C and Command V for a Mac. Okay, we have a copy of the lines. Move them to the right and separate them from the original sketch. Before we can extrude the lines to create a body, we need to close the shape to make it extrudable. I won't just draw a line to close it, as I also want to create a 3mm thick flat surface on the top to hold the filament sensor, so we can do that all together. Press the L key to select the line tool, draw a 3mm line, press the L key again, and draw another 3mm from here. Press the L key again, and connect these two points. Now we have a closed shape. Before extruding this shape, I would also like to flatten the bottom as we don't need this little triangle. Press the T key to bring up the Trim tool. When the Trim tool is selected, you can hover over the line. It will change to red, which means the line will be deleted once you click on it. After we have deleted these two lines, press L again to bring up the Line tool to draw a line and connect these two points to close the shape. OK, press Finish Sketch. Next. We will extrude this shape to a body. Use the E key to bring up the Extrude tool. We need to extrude 45 millimeters to make it the same width as the filament sensor. As you can see, there are two screw holes on the filament sensor. I also need to extrude another 20 millimeters on this side. To make two holes for the screws, we can simply draw another sketch on this surface. Draw two circles and extrude them. Create a sketch on this surface, press the C key, and we can place the first circle roughly around here. Then, use the D key to set the dimensions. It should be 5mm away from the bottom. Select the center of the circle and the baseline, and enter 5mm. We also need to set the distance from the side. Press the D key again, select the center of the circle and the left line, and enter 10mm. For the second hole, we can simply use copy and paste. 
use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl C and Ctrl V or Command C and Command V for a Mac and move it to the right. Click OK or press Enter. As the second screw hole is 15 millimeters apart, press the D key, select the center of these two holes, and set the distance to 15 millimeters. Press the D key again, and set the distance between the center of the circle and the baseline to five millimeters. Click Finish Sketch. Now, we need to cut these two holes for the screws to mount the sensor. Use the E key to bring up the extrude tool. Press down on the Shift key and press down the wheel of your mouse at the same time to change the viewing angle to the bottom. Select the bottom surface and it will cut two holes at the bottom. Press OK. Now, we have created a simple filament sensor mount. Let's export it and print it out and see if it fits. Right-click on the body and select Save as Mesh. Before, Fusion 360 saved it in STL format by default, but after the recent update, it uses 3MF format by default. Most slicers support both 3MF and STL, so we can export the file in whatever format you want, and then drag it to the slicer. When I print a model for the first time, I normally reduce its Z height to 5mm to test how it fits first. I will just use default settings and send it to the printer via Octopi. Okay, here's the part. I would say it's a little bit loose, so to make it fit better, we can go back to Fusion 360. We can simply increase the height of these two surfaces and it will fit tighter. Use the E key to bring up the extrude tool, select these two surfaces, and enter 0.1 millimeters. We can export the model again and drag it to the slicer. Since I'm pretty sure that it should fit nicely, I will just print out the whole mount. This time, it fit perfectly. It's not too tight, but it's just tight enough to fix the sensor and make sure it doesn't move unless you apply force. If you have a different printer and want to make a different mount, you just have to extrude the plate to a different size and have a different number of screw holes at different locations. You can also use the same technique to create anything you need to mount on the printer or the extrusion frame. I recently made some graphics card mounts for my crypto mining rack, as an aluminum mining rack costs more than $100. I made one using 3 meters of extrusion for about $30. I hope you found this tutorial useful. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you should see something new. See you next week.